Do you want to rank high on Pinterest and get a ton of high quality free traffic from this platform? Hi, I'm Anastasia of AnastasiaBlogger.com and in this video I will show you my 7.5 best Pinterest SEO hacks for this year. Why 7.5? Stay with me until the end of the video and I will give you the bonus 0.5, it's my downloadable Pinterest checklist that you can print and have it in front of you whenever you create your pins. And before we jump into the hacks, just have a look at my Google Analytics for my website. In the last year, Pinterest traffic generated up to 93% of all the social media traffic to my site. The second best platform for me was YouTube. And even though on YouTube channel I currently have about 73,000 subscribers, it didn't even get close to the amount of traffic from Pinterest. Funny enough, I have a very similar amount of followers on my Pinterest account. I'm at about 76,000 followers right now, so you could ask me, Anastasia, how on earth did Pinterest generate almost 10 times more page views on your site? Well, because the nature of the content is different. Pins are like magazine covers or headlines. They don't provide the actual content to the users. They just invite them to find more on your website. On YouTube, people get the actual information they were looking for inside the video and they really need to visit your site to learn more from you. Okay, I hope you see how Pinterest can be a huge traffic source for you too. And if you are motivated enough to watch this video until the end, give me a like right now. And let's get started with my Pinterest hack, Pinterest SEO hack number seven. Do keyword research. Now, the first and most easiest way to do keyword research on Pinterest is just by looking at the keyword suggestions that uh, Pinterest will show you once you start typing the keyword. And I will tell you a little bit later about these numbers that you are seeing because you will probably not see them on your profile. So I'll show you as, as a part of this uh, video with ha SEO hacks how you can add this to your profile on Pinterest as well. But for now, you will at, at least you will see the suggestions that Pinterest shows you. These are the popular keywords that Pinterest, uh, the Pinterest users are frequently typing in, in in the browser and also underneath the search bar you will find most likely you will see this um, uh, colorful keyword suggestions they're also uh, identifying for you some of the popular keywords that are searched together with this um, focus keyword we're searching initially uh, in this case it's vegan recipes another way you can use to make keyword research on Pinterest inside the platform itself is when you have a business account you will definitely have have this link to ads when you click here you can start creating an ad by the way when you're creating a Pinterest advertising account it will ask you to link your credit card but it doesn't mean that you'll have to actually run any ads you can just connect the credit card it will just stay there but you don't have to actually run any ads to use this keyword suggestion tool uh, so how it works is that you are trying to create an ad I will just uh, click continue here so that you can see the next steps where it will start showing you these keywords so for now um, to get to the step we need to click on one of these options let's say we chose find new customers here you will need to switch from add interest to add keywords and let's continue with vegan recipes since we started with this keyword if we um, start typing it here it will show you multiple ideas with uh, some some approximate numbers uh, of monthly searches i do believe that these are very uh, unrealistic numbers because even if you know something about search on google these numbers are too big for a platform like pinterest if you compare it with search volume on google nothing like millions comes up on google especially for keywords like this but maybe for just a, a short term like recipes it could be in the millions but not for um, think something like a vegan recipes dinner plant based definitely it wouldn't be um, one or two million search volume on Google for example but uh, we can at least use this tool just to get the suggest suggestions and to understand which of the keywords are relatively popular on Pinterest now we will go back to the uh, search bar and I will show you uh, in a little more detail the tool that allows me to see this search insights the tool 
tool that is providing me with this information on Pinterest platform is called Keywords Everywhere. And maybe you've heard about this tool. It's a Chrome browser extension that is typically used for Google SEO, for keyword research on Google. And um, all of this data that we're seeing here, except uh, the search insights and the trends data, uh, all this information comes uh, uh, from Google, actually. So this is the search volume from Google, but it also gives us a good idea about the popularity of this keywords because if they are super popular on Google like most likely they're also very popular keywords on Pinterest as well and when you are just doing the search and it's really nice to to be able to see these numbers right next to each keyword um, like I do here so you understand which of these keywords has much bigger potential search volume can, compared to the others Another thing that it shows you is uh, the popular pins that are ranking for this keyword. And if we go here, you'll see more information on how they get this data. So we'll show, they will show you the top pinner. It's the Pinterest account that has the most pins in uh, this search result. And it will show you some other engagement metrics uh, that show up on the pins that uh, rank high for this keyword. Then the trend data, it comes from the trend charts uh, that Pinterest itself provides. If I click on it, you'll see what what it shows. Probably you've seen this tool, trends.pinterest.com. And it, it's um, automatically set for the US traffic, but you can also, once you're already here, you can change that. Anyways, this tool is it's internal Pinterest uh, tool and you can use it even even you know, if you don't have um, uh, keywords everywhere um, as a Chrome extension. And if you look at the right column here, it shows some related trends. It's just other popular keywords that are kind of similar in the same niche of that your initial focus keyword. And then another keyword research tool that I use for Pinterest, it provides you additional advanced information. It's called Pin Inspector. You can go to, to the URL pininspector slash Anastasia and you will find a special discount for the software. It's a one-time fee and you get a $20 off when you sign up through my link. Um, I actually made another video on this software, so I'm going to give you a link to that video if you want to have a better look into what it actually does. It will be above my head somewhere and also in the description down below. Now, hack number six is go after popular keywords on Pinterest. I like to say that Pinterest is a search engine and not just a social network. And when you hear that, if you know something about Google SEO, your first idea is probably, oh, I should search for long tail, low competition keywords or else I will have no chance to rank on Pinterest. You may think that I'm crazy, but I will give you some very counterintuitive advice here. Don't try to target low competition keywords on Pinterest. You don't need to target them intentionally. Go after any super popular keywords that you like because Pinterest is not Google. It doesn't care if your domain is six months old or six years old. It doesn't care how many backlinks you have. So you can compete for any keywords you like with older Pinterest accounts. If you intentionally choose less popular keywords on Pinterest, your impressions will be very limited too, because users on this platform just don't use long search terms. They typically use short keywords and they use Pinterest suggested keywords, which show up as user is starting to type the keyword. Also, these colorful boxes are popular search terms and people often click on them. Pinterest has experimented with removing the colorful boxes for a while, but a few months back I started seeing them again on the platform for both desktop and mobile users. So that's helpful and if you are just a beginner, you don't even need any paid or advanced tools for keyword research. You can start by simply looking at these search suggestions on Pinterest. Now SEO hack number five. Save your first pin to the most relevant board on your account. This is important as you are giving Pinterest algorithm the right context and it understands better how to categorize your pins, which keywords should be assigned to your pins and what type of users it should be shown to. How can you make sure that you're saving the first pin to the most relevant board? In the next few minutes of the video, I will cover how exactly you need to optimize your boards. But for now, just remember that the title of your pin should include the same keyword that the board title includes, or at least it should be very closely related to the board title. 
I will emphasize here that ideally you should save the first pin to the board that's on your profile. So if you are in some group boards on Pinterest, they're okay as a secondary option, but you should also have a relevant board on your own account and save to that board first. And again, you want the group boards to be relevant to the topic of your pin if you use them. I don't go into the details about what is the group board in this video, and if you don't have them, just ignore this part. If you have them, don't save to them first. Now, SEO hack number four is add keywords to your pin titles, descriptions, and to your board titles and descriptions. So now let's have a look at where we need to add keywords in the pin title and pin description and how do we actually do it. If we create this pin right inside Pinterest platform, when we click create and we create just a pin, you will see here that you have a field for adding a title and here you have a field for description. For the title, you have about 100 characters, for description about 500 characters. You need to use the same a focus keyword in both your title and description. Ideally, this focus keyword should be closer to the beginning of both of them because if you look at the title, descriptions actually don't show um, almost anywhere in Pinterest feed. Most of the times you will see just part of the title, the first 30 characters about that number, uh, especially for mobile users. So it's important to have this most fo important focus keyword at the beginning so users can see right from the beginning what the pin is about. And here is how it can look when your pin is ready. Uh, your title can be pretty long, of like, like this one. You can notice here that in the description I also added hashtags, but this pin is already quite an old pin of mine. It, it's been on the platform for at least a year or even probably even a couple of years. So um, I used to add hashtags because Pinterest encouraged users and they even had a special search results for hashtags. Um, the, these hashtags don't work as hashtags anymore. They are not clickable on the platform. So uh, it's not worth even adding them, but if you add, it doesn't hurt your account either. You just don't want to add way too many, maybe like two or three hashtags, maximum like five hashtags per pin description should be enough. But again, as I said, you shouldn't even worry about hashtags because they're not a big thing on Pinterest this year. They used to work a couple of years ago. They don't work on the platform anymore. There is an additional field called alt text and you can add it if you wish. On my old pins, I don't have it because it's pretty recent additional field on Pinterest. If you want to add it, uh, try Try to make it clear that what your pin is about. Uh, don't try to just stuff it with keywords. It's not the purpose of the alt tag. Um, alt text, uh, the same as in Google, it's created for visually impaired people, uh, for them to understand what your pin is about, what, you, what your text is about. When you look at my boards, you will also notice that all the boards have some keywords that I'm targeting in each board. They're different. Uh, board titles, I recommend to keep them quite short, uh, maybe like just one keyword. Try to Don't try to target multiple keywords in each board title. And when you open the board, you will see that inside the board, you can also add a board description. You can actually do it only once you created the board with a title. And when you are inside the board, you can click edit the board and there you'll have an option to write down your description. It also can be up to 500 characters. I noticed that it's pretty common for users to add just some uh, keywords uh, separated by comma, just trying to stop keyword stuff these descriptions. I don't recommend that. I think that you should still try to write it for people to read because at the moment I haven't heard about any penalties on the accounts that were keyword stuffing their descriptions, but at the same time we don't know where the platform is heading to. Maybe at some uh, point in the future they will start penalizing accounts for, for using this keyword stuffing in their description. So you want to avoid it and instead of adding adding just uh, 30 keywords separated by comma, I recommend you to include maybe like three, maximum five related keywords related to your focus keyword in the title. As your hack number three is add keywords in tags for video pins and for idea pins. You notice for this tip, I focus specifically on video pins and idea pins. And this is why if you just look at the search results on Pinterest, both on desktop and on mobile devices, you will notice that a lot of pins that are ranking high are actually 
actually either video pins like this one or idea pins over here. So it becomes even more important to include the right keywords in the titles um, of your video pins and idea pins, but also not only that, you need to include them as tags to help Pinterest understand your pins better. So I'm gonna start creating an idea pin to il illustrate what I mean here. Uh, I'm just gonna take a random image from my computer. It's not the way you should create uh, idea pins. It should be something vertical or ideally you should start your first slide with a video, but we're just doing as a test because I wanted to show you how you're going to add the titles and descriptions and the keywords inside the idea pins. Once you uploaded an image or a video, you need to work on your title that's right here on top of the content. I'm going to change here the color of the text because otherwise it would be white by default. So this is the text that goes uh, as an overlay on top of your, of your image or a video. But on the next step, you can also add the keywords inside your pin title. And here, um, ideally, it should be a little longer, not just the actual focus keyword, but make it like your normal pin title or your blog post title. And then you need to look at these tags. And the same tags are going to appear for you in the video pins. They don't show up for image pins, but for video and for ideas idea pins, you have this option to add uh, tags. So you, you can just start typing something and it will suggest you this uh, tags that are already inserted in the platform. So not for any topic or any type of category, you will find a lot of these tags. It depends. But if you have them, uh, definitely you should add them if they apply to your situation. SEO hack number two is schedule pins to be saved when the audience is active using the native Pinterest scheduler, using Canvas scheduler or using Tailwind. Now, let me quickly show you how you can use this with a native Pinterest scheduler. So imagine you just uploaded your image pin and you want to publish it later. So what you need to do after you submitted your title description and the destination link, you can just click here. Instead of publish immediately, you click here, publish at a later day and it will show you this calendar and you can choose any date in the future, couple of weeks, not further than that, just a couple of weeks and in advance. And also when you look here at the time, it will show you in your time zone based on your current location on your, I guess, on your IP address. So you need to understand that when your audience is more active, that's when, when you should choose the time. So I live here in Europe. So for me, I would choose probably posting in the late uh, evening or almost in the night hours in order to get the spins published in the evening for the US users in EST time zone. Now, I also mentioned that you can schedule your pins using Canva and this is a free graphic design tool. But if you want to use the scheduler um, inside Canva, you will need to use one of their paid plans. And once you created a pin, what happens next, you go to share on social, you will choose Pinterest. And here things are pretty simple. You will um, just select the pin, the exact image that you want to save, select the format you want to create. You can add the title over here. You can add the description. Here you will select the destination website. Don't forget to choose the most relevant board. Over here it will show some of the boards from your profile. You can choose any of the boards that you have on your profile. And then you will see here at the bottom left corner, there is an icon that shows that it only is available to premium users. If you click on it, you'll be able, instead of publishing this pin right away, you'll be able to schedule it at some point in the future. The, the only downside here with Canva is that you can only save this pin or schedule this pin to one particular board at a time. And if you wanted to schedule it to another board, you'd have to repeat the whole process all over, all over again. And that's when Tailwind Scheduler comes in really handy. And I'm going to show you now how to use it to schedule your pins in Tailwind. Now, uh, if you're using Tailwind Scheduler, you can also do this and you can schedule the same pin to maybe like three different most relevant boards with a seven day interval that's recommended in Tailwind. I'm going to select this three different boards. And when I click on the interval, it will suggest at least seven days by default. And here I will choose the time. Uh, in my account on Tailwind, I set my time zone uh, to EST. So here I can select easily the exact time when I want to uh, get this published without making the math in my head because my Tailwind account is already set to the EST time zone. 
So I will select around 9 p.m. and Tailwind will choose some other uh, available slots around this time. It doesn't have to be exactly the same time every time when it goes to the next board uh, with a week a weekly interval. It can be somewhere close to 9 p.m. Uh, and it will just um, select the, the available slots in your schedule. Now SEO hack number one is create idea pins as they are the new format of pins and they get priority distribution. This works especially well for new accounts to get targeted followers. Now I just wanted to invite you again to have a look at the idea pins and how much space in the search results is given to idea pins. You'll see that one, two, three, four. Every time when you see the slider um, icon over here in the top left corner of the image, it's an idea pin. And you can also identify them often by this engagement uh, icons, which do not apply to regular image pins, but they actually apply to video pins. Uh, um, the difference between a video pin and idea pin would be that video is just a single file. It will not include this little icon of several slides. Uh, so even if you have just one slide in the idea pin, it will still appear with a slide icon over here. If you have that much space given to idea pins, uh, definitely Pinterest is pushing them in the algorithm and it really can help, especially for new accounts. Why? Because uh, uh, this feature, it allows you to grow your following on Pinterest. How it happens is that users will click uh, after the reach the last slide at the end of it they will have this invitation to follow your profile so you just need to click on this button follow and these users become your followers uh, it doesn't happen obviously with image pins from an image pin you would go to the user's website so pinterest is trying to keep users more inside the platform and in exchange for you know for keeping the users inside the platform they at least give you in exchange these new followers to your profile i would say that idea pins are a very good allocation of your time and effort for especially for new accounts because you just don't have any followers and you need to use everything and anything in your capacity to get some eyeballs on your profile on Pinterest. Uh, it doesn't apply uh, as much to older accounts that have already some large following because um, you, you, you're better off just creating um, normal regular image pins because they drive you traffic. You already have the followers to go through your pins. Um, because you know that idea pins don't allow you to link to your site like image pins do. So if you actually create idea pins, my little trick here would be to create not very long idea pins because I see that some of the idea pins, they have multiple slides. So for users, it might be nicer because you are, you're basically showing the entire story inside that idea pin. But for you as a content creator, it doesn't give you mm, as much followers because uh, it takes much longer for users to reach to this last step where they can follow your profile from the idea pin. Now bonus hack number 0 0.5 is download the Pinterest SEO checklist and I will give you a link up there and in the description down below. I'm off now to create my next video where I will show you exactly how to generate idea pins and how you can make money with them even if you don't have your own website. Subscribe and hit the bell button so that you don't miss it when my next video goes live. And if you're watching this in the future, I will have the video about idea pins linked for you up there and I'll see you in the next one.